I am delighted to be joined by James the Honey Badger Hendon ahead of an absolutely massive fight at Cage Warriors 160. But before we get on to that, you quite possibly have my favourite nickname of all time. So where did that come from? Um, well, I, uh, it's a bit of a long story. Um, but it was just purely because of like the way that I fight. Obviously, they're quite aggressive. So uh, but I've got quite a fairly aggressive style. So it kind of just came, came from that, really. It's an interesting name. You've obviously got this huge fight against Tabara Tarilla, both with entertaining styles. But before we get on to him as a competitor, what do you make of his persona? I know he loves wearing the masks. He loves playing psychological warfare. So how have you found him to deal with in the build-up? Um, for me, like, I feel like people, obviously, if that's what's going to help him, that's what's going to help him. Like, if that's what's going to help him get in the zone for the fight, like, then, then so be it, you know. But to me, all that, all that stuff is just like smoke and mirrors, you know. It's just... It's all just this sort of like fake persona to kind of get you in that sort of zone to fight. But it's like, I don't need anything like that in my life to, to get me ready to fight. Like, I'm ready to fight all the time, mate. So I don't need that stuff in my life. So when you look at him as a competitor, he's heavy handed, he's entertaining. You obviously have possibly the superior grappling. You're very good in that department with your judo background. How do you go about defeating him? Um, well, I, I'm I'm confident that I could defeat him in, in any aspect of of the fight completely. If I'm being complete, if I'm being honest with you, like I feel like I'm a, uh, I'm a better striker. Um, I'm a better grappler. I feel like I'm I'm smarter. I've got better technique. I feel like I'm just better in every department. Not taking anything away from Depay, because obviously he's very good, but I do I, I do think that I'm just superior in in every aspect of the fight so yeah and i wonder if you're pulling anything from your recent time in thailand at the tiger muay thai trouts obviously you doing exceptionally well there can you tell me about what your experience was like competing with so many different people from all around the world yeah um i mean first of all it was an absolutely amazing amazing experience and i'm i'm so so fortunate to actually have of of being able to do something like that and and actually win it as well so um but yeah like being able to compete with multiple different people from around the world that's not like the first time i've been a tiger i've been i've been quite a few times now and um but yeah like going onto the training mats and having like people from all walks of life from completely different backgrounds like you could be sparring like a, a world champion from bloody russia you could be sparring a, a champion from japan or or brazil or somewhere like that you know so like you're getting a you're getting a good look at all these different styles and and things like that so yeah it's it definitely it's definitely good for like a, a like a confidence thing anyway like being able to like do super super well against all these different like high level guys and stuff like that so yeah so when you look at all these different nationalities whether it be the russians or the brazilians is there a particular nation that you felt like you could take the most advice from and learn the most from no, I, I don't really like look at things like that. You know, like when people say about, oh, like these Russians, they're like they're scary and things like that. Like, or oh, the Brazilians, they've got wicked jujitsu and they're good. But at the end of the day, like it's a fight. A fight's a fight. You know, do, do you really think like people from them countries are, are thinking that way about like people from like England or America or France or wherever it may be? You know, like it doesn't matter where you're from. At the end of the day, a fight's a fight and. It doesn't matter where you're from, we're all human, mate, and, and we all bleed just the same. So, like, I don't ever look at things like that and, and, and think too much about it. So you're on this incredible journey right now, obviously, going through cage glories, doing a lot on the international judo circuit when you were younger, and now you're on the cusp of a potential cage warriors title shot, maybe a shot in the contender series. Can you tell me a little bit about your journey right from when you first started to where you are now? Yeah, of course. Um, so I started training um in judo at the age of four um start competing like like six um won like multiple national titles uh competed for uh england junior gb team uh competed in grand slams in europe uh, medaled at grand slams in europe like um and so it kind of started off with that and then went into started boxing around about 12 like my dad was actually he was like, um, my dad was a really good boxer 
and uh, and he was at one point he was actually coaching the army boxing team. Um, so I always kind of wanted to follow follow my dad's footprints and um, you know do a bit of striking. So I started striking when I was about 13, 12, 12, 13. Obviously, I always used to do bits and bobs in the house with my dad and things. But like I properly started when I was about twelve. Started going to a boxing club, but because I was doing so much judo at the time. Uh, like six days, six days a week of judo. I only had like one day a week to be able to fit in the boxing, so I was doing like seven days a week just training from like twelve years old. Um, and then I started one uh, one Christmas. My dad actually bought me some uh, some UFC DVDs, whipped them on, and then I knew from that point that point on that's all I wanted to do was just get in, uh, do MMA, and be be the best in the world. You know, so. Then, started kickboxing uh but whilst i was doing my judo i started kickboxing uh wrestling uh just dabbling with like different different things and then we moved from down south to the northeast and at that point i was 15 years old um and when we moved obviously there wasn't um the same level of judo club that i was training at back down south so i just thought well this is a great opportunity for me to go down the MMA route now and just and I never look back like I never look back that's amazing it's an incredible story and it's fantastic to hear how much of an influence your dad had over you obviously so many fighters coming up watch those UFC DVDs and it's entertaining yeah. that that you managed to come through that way as well but how involved is your dad today is he still a pivotal part of your journey oh 100 percent like my dad my dad's like I wouldn't be here now if it wasn't for for my dad but not only my dad, like my whole family in general, like the most supporting people on earth. But, but, but yeah, my dad, like you know, he was so good when I was growing up. Like he was so strict, like to the point where when I was a kid, I actually secretly like hated the things that he used to make me do. Man, I would come in from I would come in from school, right? I would come in from school sometimes, and the first thing I'd do, I'd put my training kit on, and he'd make me do circuits. He'd make me go out <laughs> running. This was before anything else mate this was before i'd go and do judo on the night time so as soon as i got in from school get your training kit on boom it beats me in it beats me in the house doing training make me go out running things like that and this was like all the time mate from like from what i recall being 12 years old like doing all this crazy shit and at the time obviously that you think like oh that's a bit that's a bit extreme doing that to a 12 year old blah 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 but like it, it's gonna either be hanging around on the streets with with bums mate and acting like a bum or or do something good with your life and I feel like you just kind of installed that value into me and it kind of led to me to obviously where I am at where I am right now and um, uh, I'm so I'm like super grateful for it you know I'm super grateful for him and like not only just that just imagine like I was competing like say at least once a month maybe tw- sometimes twice a month and then like the only time he had off from work he would be taking me to and from driving me here there and everywhere like to go and compete and you know so i i owe a lot to i owe a lot to him because he's he's bent over backwards you know for me so as you've said in other interviews that it's your mindset that's your greatest asset and that's obviously come from him and, and probably that army background that he comes from. yeah for sure 100 percent. like like both my parents like both my parents are, are nails they're like both so mentally nails um and that's that's definitely one of the values that they've installed into me um but i feel like it's probably from where my dad was doing all these crazy training things with me like you know was was pretty was pretty strict in terms of like you have to train you have to do this you have to do that like but it's all coming from a good place you know because he could have quite easily just been like oh no like just miss this go out on the streets and bum around like what am I going to get out of doing that where whereas I could be in the gym getting better and actually making something making something for myself you know so you know it might it might it might be harsh to some people but but to me it's it it was the best thing he could ever have done for me so is there any of the exercises in particular that you hated more than the rest oh no probably not (laughs) Probably not. Like he's a smart guy when it comes to like training and things. He's trained his whole life as well. So um, it's not that I hated exercise because I, I I enjoy I love work like working out and working out with him. And to be honest with you, I still work out with him to this day. Like I, I still go to the gym with him and things like that as well. Um, 
he's, I mean, he's like a 50 year old bloke, mate, who's like trains every single day of his life, you know, like he never misses sessions. Like, I don't know too many 50 year olds that are like doing that sort of crazy shit, you know? So, no, he, he's, he's someone who I can look up to and I've learned a lot from over the years. And, you know, like, like I say, he's molded me into the man who I am today. So I'm very grateful for him. Well, James, I really appreciate you talking to me, telling me all about the origin stories of where the honey badger came from and everything that your dad's put you through in your life and how he's made you this fantastic fighter that you are today. I really appreciate you giving me some time just based off the fact that the fight is tomorrow and I know you want to get hydrating. But before I let you go, is there anything that you would like to add that I perhaps haven't asked you about? Um, no, not really, mate. Like, I mean, if you've got any more questions, like fire them away. I'm... I'm uh... I'm all ears, mate. If you've got any more, any more questions you want to ask. Good stuff, good stuff. Well, we'll finish on this. Obviously, okay. this fight is a big one for you. Hopefully, it's going to take you on the way to getting a shot in the UFC or another <laughs> shot at a Cage Warriors belt. Mm -hmm. So, you're going to get in there with Tobias tomorrow. What is the official prediction? When does it end? How does it end? So, for me, official prediction, second round, TKO or submission.